and we seamlessly move on and come full circle with regard to the input presentations. Thank you very much for alluding to the aesthetics. We'll come back to age and aging in the arts. However, so far, we have looked at it from a scientific, if not academic point of view, from a bird's eye perspective, which we adopted to look at the phenomena of physical decay and social oblivion. Now we will look at literally we'll go down to the ground and adopt if you <laughs> want to call it that a frog's perspective from the ground upwards and we'll look at uh, the body in the arts we'll start with nanako nakajima who at the age of three started her education in classical japanese dance and at the age of 13 was a certified teacher, became a certified teacher. So even as a teenager, as far back as that, she was faced with a situation where she worked with people older than she was herself, teaching them something, trying to convey something. And since then, she has looked in detail into age and aging. She is a dance scientist and choreographer. She lives in Kyoto, but has been a teacher at FU Berlin in Germany for a while, where during this past year she had a guest professorship. Nanako Nakajima was here over the past 10 days, and she accompanied two Buto dancers and dance teachers who in this project, plus for an aging world, met with people with di dementia, with groups of people suffering from dementia, and she uh, observed and drew conclusions, and she will now present her findings under the title of Embracing the Aging Body in Dance. In English, please use your earphones again to hear the simultaneous translation, or get rid of it if you are just fit enough. And a very warm welcome to Nanako Nakajima. Okay. Um, ich heiße Nanako Nakajima. Oh, my name is Nanako Nakajima. Thank you very much, Peter, Nico, Mark. Ich freue mich. I'm, I'm very pleased. It's a pleasure for me to be in Düsseldorf again. I'm happy to be here. Embracing the aging body in dance. Introduction. The question of what does it mean to be an Asian dancer was once a taboo subject in Euro-American dance. In the field of ballet, beauty is found in flexible, agile, young dancing bodies full of power and stamina. At the Paris Opera, ballet dancers retired from dance by the age of 45. The physical deterioration of the body affects dancers' careers far more profound way than it does in any other art. Older dancers become choreographers, dance teachers, and producers. Older dancers coming back to dance was unheard of in the past. They said, follow well to dance. In some Asian countries, However, professional dancers continue dancing into their 60s and 70s. Traditional dancers are respected and sometimes are designated as intangible national assets. The long careers of contemporary Japanese dancers, such as Kazuo Ono and ballet dancer Yoko Morishita, are celebrated. Emancipated from existing dance technique, 
Their embodied bodily knowledge is more powerful than what is visible on stage. The historical past appears through the present aging body in dance. In response to international performances of the aging body, aging dancers, aging dancers, a new trend has emerged in contemporary performance and dance. For example, German choreographer, dancer, director Pina Bausch from Wuppertal and Zollingen, and Lyman Hoke from Dusseldorf, and French choreographer, dancer Jerome Bell, created an atmosphere that highlights the longer lives of dancers. Amidst the aging of the world population, people have started paying more attention to the longer lives of dancers. The issue of the aging body in dance has entered a new critical phase in the time of pandemics. COVID-19 has highlighted the vulnerability of aging populations to emerging viruses. The crisis has also transformed the theatrical milieu surrounding dance. Because of the pandemics, many theaters have been closed, and they are instead providing online programs. Dancers perform not only on stage, but also at their own houses. Dance no longer takes place only at theaters and museums. It has expanded to private and virtual spaces. The art of dance goes beyond the boundary of the theatrical space of modern construction. When dance leaps beyond the boundary of theater art, dancers can also keep dancing beyond the cultural boundary of age. So in this presentation, I introduce my research on the aging body in dance, which incorporates legendary Buto dancer Kazuo Ono and the approach of dancer and choreographer Yuko Kaseki in our Typhoon project on aging. One, Kazuo Ono, withering flower and rebooting memory. Buto is known for its shocking and contorted body gestures and its commitment to breaking taboos. It draws on both Euro-American and native Japanese influences. Buto was developed in the late 1950s by Tatsumi Hijikata and Kazuo Ono, who are both in the photos. And Hijikata and Ono condemned and eventually rejected contemporary Japanese modern dances strict adherence to Western styles. Today, Buto is practiced by performers all over the world. The influence of Buto is even more pronounced outside Japan, where it is performed in ways that are strictly faithful to the original method practiced by Hijikata and Ono, as well as in ways that attempt creative variations of the art form. In contrast to Hijikata, Kazuo Ono, who is in the costumes in the photo, he danced and lived longer. According to Kazuo Ono's son, Yoshito Ono, at over 90 years of age, Kazuo was not nearly as physically agile as he once was. Although he used to have enough energy to create a vast universe on stage, his physical powers had inevitably declined as he got older. Comparing his life to a flower's life cycle, one could describe Kazuo's life as a process of gradually withering and falling off the stem. While some might have considered him to be well past his prime, he has not lost his inner vitality. Even in this physically diminished state, Kazuo Ono remained fully alive. The intensity of these years, as the divide between life and death started drawing in, generated the lyricism previously unknown in his work. At an age when most dancers had long abandoned their careers, 
the primal strength of Kazuo Ono's dance emerged even more falsely than before, despite the fact that his body was progressively weakening. Kazuo Ono spoke about his dialectics of dance practice and aesthetics as follows. Quote, don't treat dance as some kind of abstract game. Take each and every step as though you are putting your life on the line. Mastering technique has never interested me for the simple reason that if I were to focus on skill, I'd instantly lose touch with the natural phenomena. If I were to concentrate on acquiring technical skills, I'd probably turn into nothing more than a technician and thereby unwittingly lose sight of what I'm aiming for. Technique could never provide me with the wherewithal to achieve what I've set out to do. I don't care whether you are skillful or not. What I do care about, though, is that your performance makes me walk away afterward, feeling grateful for being alive. Does your dance ask for forgiveness? End quote. Kazuo Ono does not trust dance technique because it transforms him into a technician and nothing else. Technique no longer matters. He realized the limits of technique when he performed his last piece in the modern dance style, The Old Man and the Sea, in 1959. And this is the photo of this piece. He realized that one lost the soul even if one tried to take dance technique to its utmost limits. Therefore, he started contemplating whether technique and life might be contradictory. As long as Kazuo Ono followed dance technique, he was copying other people's lives and was nothing more than a copy. Instead, Kazuo Ono forgot everything that he learned in order to truly dance. Kazuo Ono said, quote, there's no need to memorize movements and gestures because no matter what I do, I'll forget them anyway. The essential thing is that the experience remains perfectly ingrained in my mind and in my soul. That's what comes with repeated practice. It's of little consequence that I forget what I've practiced because despite myself, I'm constantly absorbing the fruits of my endeavors. End quote. Dance technique reconstructs what one has learned. Because dance technique is always a deliberate act of the will, the body is less spontaneous with its living movements. By forgetting what he learned, Kazuo Ono achieved momentary freedom while dancing. As he got older, he lost more of his memories which enable him to escape from the boundaries of the conscious, visible world. Japanese dance critic Nario Goda explained that Kazuo Ono's dance was fascinating because he was senile and often forgot things. So here I show the short clip of Kazuo Ono and this clip was a part of the film directed by Daniel Schmidt, and it was uh, produced in Thank you. 
Kazuo Ono's dance studio in Kamihoshikawa in Yokohama on December 27, 2008. I saw 102-year-old Kazuo Ono lying on the bed and attached to many tubes in his living room. He was no longer capable of seeing and speaking because of his age. Kazuo Ono's son, Yoshito Ono, told me that Kazuo Ono danced even at his age. He breathed differently when listening to the music. On the way back to Kamihoshikawa Station, I was choked and suddenly burst into tears. He still dances in his deathbed. Dying is the end of aging, which is beyond our control. Even if technology is further developed and many people can live longer and healthier, there is always an end. We can dance until the very end of aging, but as long as we are aging, nobody escapes death. This is the critical part, crucial part of aging, a very singular, individual part of the dancer's life in the very literal sense, this means to stop dancing. Kazuo Ono once said that we would reach the point where we forgot ourselves. In 2000, Kazuo Ono was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And in 2010, Kazuo Ono passed away at the age of 103. Yuko Kaseki's approach to the aging body in dance. So I introduce Yuko, who is sitting in the back of the, the hall. Thank you for coming. Yuko Kaseki is a director. <laughs> Yuko Kaseki is a director, 
choreographer, teacher, and buto dancer who has lived in Berlin. She studied buto dance and performing art at Habeka Braunschweig with Anzu Furukawa and danced in her company from 1989 to 2000. She has been searching for a way to penetrate the space between physical and spiritual expression. She has worked with differently abled dancers and performers with diverse cultural backgrounds. By incorporating their personal histories, social problems, and unique bodies into her work, she has expanded the physical imagination and questions what the normal dancing bodies mean. While Yuko Kaseki's interest in aging and death has been further stimulated by her own family situation, this is the first time for her to work with older participants. During the workshop this week in Dusseldorf, she has led several Buto workshops with the participants, such as moving with an image like water, exchanging energy, and improvising. During Yuko's workshop held at the Caritas Centrum plus Stockholm, participants are invited to hold hands. Holding hands is a recognition of others through one's own body. This helps the participants feel connected to the others and offers emotional calmness. By exchanging energy through hands and mirroring each other's movements, one woman slowly started moving together with Yuko. So I show the short documentations of the workshop thanks to Caritas Centrum and Project. This form of dance improvisation is essential to Buto aesthetics. Kazuo Ono was a well-trained dancer, but he was always improvising. In improvisation, choreography is not fixed. Therefore, there is no such thing as mistake. Dancers can forget everything. Every time an improvised movement is updated, 
the dancers' memories are rebooted as well. Yuko Kaseki writes, quote, everyone can have their own dance without being criticized. Affirmation of existence, there is no hierarchy, no nationality, no age, no disability. The exchange of energy is not tied to the head or body, but is one of the phenomena in creating the whole and not just in the human-oriented world. Everything is a process, a continuous transformation. What I would like to work on now is how to deal with aging and death and spiritual discipline, to find communication deeply by sharpening chi energy and opening up the magnetic field and to practice new forms of expression with and without the stage, end quote. When Kazuo Ono crossed the boundary of age, he went beyond the limitations of a dancer. He did not care anymore about being exposed as a dancer. Generally, it takes considerable self-confidence to be a dancer because one is totally exposed to the audience all times on stage. All of the performing art require tremendous courage However, aging neutralized him and he transcended beyond this state of mind. Ono described his dance in relation to his own life. Quote, at the age of nearly 80, there is no more stage or daily life. End quote. When dance overlaps with one's whole life, one's life took the form of dance. Elderly people are looked at differently in Europe than in Japan. Age in Japan, aging is very much related to the essence of art. As it is said that longevity is a part of art. People live longer and also work into their older years. Aging is important to the process of artistic training. One does not attain the ultimate level of level as an artist until one practices every day and lives for a long time. In Euro-American culture, the art of dance was reserved for the professionals on stage, while dance for elderly people was rather for therapy. However, this system is changing because of the culture politics as well as pandemics. Anyone can dance on stage and the stage is no longer just as theaters, but also in daily life. Although Yuko Kaseki's approach comes from the Buto traditions, she integrates German conceptions of the aging body in dance. The improvisation allows elderly people to forget the choreography and improvise on the spot as they move, similar to how Kazuo Ono danced. Kazuo Ono's movement did not consist of a series of consecutive actions in time. His movement was not performed in a, in a linear sequence. Instead, one had the impression that he thrust deeper and deeper into each and every movement and steps, as though he were moving within each movement. His performances generated the feeling of being drawn down into a great depth that was within him. Yuko Kaseki might seek this depth of movement during her workshop with elderly people. While Kazuo Ono himself had Alzheimer's disease, Yuko Kaseki works with elderly people with dementia. During her workshop, the conversation of the dancers is often repetitive and so are their movements. They dance because they enjoy it, not for the sake of the audience. 
Aging reflects the aesthetics of Japanese dance. We can dance better when we become older. Yuko Kaseki explores the aesthetics, aesthetics of aging together with aging bodies in dance. She can make you dance better when you become older. Thank you. And so we thank you very much, Nanako, for the stunning moments of insight in a world so close to us, thus far away, seemingly often. Um. Nanako mentioned it. She looked at me briefly while she said it. The only big company, dance company in Germany that works around the topic of aging is Pina Bausch Theater in Wuppertal because there dancers are free to grow old as part of the company. And this is why uh, as someone being born in, having been born in Wuppertal, I have been confronted with that topic uh, all my life. And whenever you are watching a Sunday night crime show, crime movie Tatort, if it plays in Wuppertal, the um, DA is played by Mechthild Groschmann and that actress has been one of the first dancers of the Pina Bausch company and she sometimes joins the company for a performance. Just uh, as, a, as a fun fact, I don't know if you knew this, other dancers kept on dancing for Pina Bausch company until they retired, something that is unheard of in other ensembles. In Wuppertal, there has always been this joke that the older dancers spent more time in physio than on stage, actually, but they form a natural part of the ensemble. It is, and that is also a way of embracing the aging body in dance. That was something that was very close to my heart. 